we're here with um, Craig Sheridan, um, who runs Legends Hall. Um, and uh, he's just got a, a phenomenal set of brands that um, are bringing some pretty cool things to market. Um, he's going to be at um, uh, BC Food and Bev's um, Food Pro 24, um, and he's going to be speaking there. So if you haven't bought tickets or you have bought tickets and you don't know what you're going to see, um, pay attention because um, Craig's going to be there. You probably want to go stop in and see him. Um, find out a little bit more about um, Chateau Water, um, which is all the buzz at the moment, um, not including <laughs> all of the other amazing things he has going on there. Um, anyway, so uh, Craig, thanks for joining us. And uh, we would love it if you told us a little bit about yourself. If you feel like giving us a sneak peek on Food Pro, you can. But I feel like whatever you're up to, people are going to want to know about anyway. That's awesome. Thanks for the intro and uh, mm -hmm. great to meet you guys. Um, interesting fact, I haven't been to Food Pro before. Okay. Every year I've signed up for it, I've been the last guy in line because we've been so busy scaling our business. Um, so I'm, I'm more than excited to be there. I think it's going to be a fantastic event. Just the fact that, you know, the food community in BC and, and in Canada, uh, for that matter, it's, it's a very tight community. So I'm looking forward to making more connections and meeting all the rest of the people we know. Uh, quick 30 seconds on me. Um, I, I was born and raised in the food business. My grandfather had a meat manufacturing facility, uh, value add servicing chefs in BC uh, from the late 70s. So I had no choice. I was born in the business, worked my way up, and uh, we sold to Cisco Foods as one of their specialty manufacturers back in 2009. Um, and then I stuck on with those guys. Uh, I was an executive with them around their meat and seafood business for Canada for seven years. Um, it was a great, a great experience. All I know is food. This is, this has been, you know, by design for me my whole life. So I'm, I'm living my, my passion and my dream. Um, so this is just the beginning for me, hopefully. And, uh, we're going to keep the ball rolling here, but legends hall, uh, the current project I've wanted to invest in the food space as an entrepreneur. Uh, for me, I see the future in food is, We've got all these large amalgamated brands over time that are um, starting to get stale. And I wanted to be a part of that shift and that change. And I wanted to get into something that we could service the market very well, uh, provide high quality products, consciously sourced, natural, GMO free, whatever we can do. So we've got this unique business. We've got a meat manufacturing business. We distribute and sell to some of the best restaurants and retailers in BC. We've recently moved into a 30,000 square foot facility in Vancouver. Uh, we have our dedicated production facility. We also add this new uh, pizza manufacturer room. So we've just launched our Wooza branded pizza, which we're trying to bridge the gap between the frozen pizza aisle and delivery. Okay. That kind of 15 to $17 yeah. price point. It's an amazing product, all made by hand in our facility. Um, and I think what's really unique about us is we we manufacture and distribute to the end user. So at one point during COVID, we had our own direct to consumer business going to, to homes, but now we've kind of shifted back B2B. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit about me. Wow, amazing. So amazing. Legends legends actually, so you manufacture as well as distribute your brands as well as other people's brands? Is that how it sort of? Yeah, yeah, it's really cool. I mean, I set out initially to carry brands. I remember the very first product that I set up when I had a truck in a warehouse six years ago was blueberries from the Fraser Valley from this great company called Berry Hill. They're a manufacturer of uh, Fraser Valley cultivated blueberries that they export into Japan. I found this great large blueberry that I took to market and sold to all the smoothie shops in the city. That was the very first product that I set up in my system and we still sell those. So that's one example. And then what I know, just harnessing my past was was the meat business and right. what i thought was the opportunity there was uh you know to bring consciously sourced products to market we did a quick little acquisition of one of our competitors uh hills foods so for yeah. for anyone out there who knows of the hills branded product out in the market that uh, we've continued yeah. to 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 drive um successfully yeah good for you wow yeah good for you that is cool um, it's a cool vision, um, for the space you want to be in. 
Um, and I, I, I do think, I, I think this, this pizza thing you're on is, is actually kind of cool too, right? Like such a smart play yeah. into a, a, a big need gap. Um, I think so, for retailers, it is too, Phil. It's either 30 yeah. bucks for pizza today delivered yeah. to the house, or yeah. it's yeah. still going to be eight, nine bucks for okay, a shitty pizza of yeah. the old school cardboard box. Yeah. So there's, there is, there is room in the middle and it typically, unfortunately what it is, you'll go to, whether it's a fresh street or I don't care who it is in the city, like you'll find some nice stuff, but it's either going to be priced a little too high or it's not available across enough retailers. Do you know what I mean? It might be specific to Fresh Street, which is good, but there's only six or seven locations in the city or someone else. It'd be nice to have something that had a little more breadth that was a, a better quality than the box and not near as expensive as if I have to bring it into the house. Yeah, you nailed it, Kenny. I mean, that's that's the game plan for us is people are they're going to move their wallet they're going to move the share wallet so no choice. they're going to want the can they're going to want the convenient pizza that's cost effective for the kids um and and when they're on the go and and it's a busy friday night and the hockey game's on they're going to want to order a pizza delivered right. to to the house right? right and and so like we we want to tap into a little bit of all of that but we know that our niche is going to be somewhere in the middle where um there's there's value on a high quality product that's mm -hmm. That's not mass produced, um, and and you know I think it's it's going to be very beneficial to just get the awareness out. Like we we initially developed that uh, that distribution product for Nightingale. So during right. COVID, uh, Chef David Hawksworth he put that together, um, and that's what really started the for us. It was the glimpse into the future of pizza, and I still feel, you know, if you go into Europe or in the U.S., the the pizza category is is far more robust than where we are and i think it's it's making its way here well, i think it's about time i mean typically you know we've been in retail way too long well i have for sure <laughs> and i'd rather not i try to tell people be careful about playing in the middle because the middle is, yeah. is usually a, a vortex that'll get you nowhere and it sucks you down yeah. but there are pockets like this one especially with the way pricing has gone on the food service side is so expensive now to, you know, a plate of pasta is 32 bucks. A plate of pasta should never be $32. $32 yeah. is still to feed the family. It's pasta for Christ's sakes. Pizza is sort of the same sort of commodity. When you start, you know, delivering pedestrian for lack of a better pizza to the house for 25, 30 bucks for a pie, you're starting to push, in my opinion, the limits. But I also don't want to buy a, a shitty box one for eight, nine yeah. bucks because I know exactly what I just bought, which is just a lot of, flour that's been risen and really not that tasty so i love the fact you are actually playing in the middle where i typically would tell people don't do the middle yeah yeah it's it's a new category i think within pizza i think you're you're dead right kenny it's um we don't we want we don't want to create the fast pizza we don't want to produce something super fast and cost effective but at the same time we want to show the value yeah. um yeah and and through the ingredients too but i think what's great about pizza as a whole is everyone loves pizza everybody likes it's, pizza it's it's so approachable yes yeah mindless who doesn't like pizza like seriously yep exactly oh, that's pretty cool so, aside from that, so what else so during your talk i mean i don't know what you do do you know what you're do you know what you're talking about next friday yeah i do i do yeah yeah so we're with a great panel and, and what we're talking about is scaling selling or holding a business Oh, I love that. Yeah, it's it's a really cool conversation because I think a lot of entrepreneurs in any space, they they kind of grapple with all those different concepts in their head, whether yeah. it be the beginning of the thought process of the business that you're trying to put together or whether you bought something or you're you're just at a point where you need to invest and scale. And I think you ruminate on all these things. So I think the conversation is going to be interesting to understand from the different perspectives. And then right. for those in the audience that have all been ruminating on this. And, and I can tell you from my perspective, and I don't want to elaborate too much, but you know, the, the brass tacks of it is we all live through this at, at some point or another. And uh, I think without talking about the past and some of the challenges we've all faced, but in business in general, and certainly in the food space, you have so much coming at you. Yeah you've got inflation you've got covid you've got labor challenges uh you've got a very dynamic grocery sector that's a part of uh your business and yeah. and you have to adapt to all that so you've you've got decisions to make along the way and uh so yeah it's going to be a great conversation with some some very smart entrepreneurs 
Oh, that's super exciting. That's exciting. really cool. Yeah. That's going to be very, very cool. Yeah. Awesome. Um, that is it, sir. Quick, that's all that's it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. What we'll do is we'll have you, we'll, we'll, uh, you know, I'll see you next week. Phil is in Toronto. I mean, he's fan. Yeah. So I'm, I'll be there. But what we'll do is we'll actually have you on the podcast ideally over cool. the next couple months. Yeah. And then you love, can give us the podcast. The yeah. Yeah. I, I listen every week. You're doing an awesome well, job. I, 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 I love that's the really fluidity appreciate. of it. Yeah. It's great. Well, well, thank you. That's, that's yeah. nice. Yeah. I'm always surprised that people listen to us still. So I, I don't, you know. Yeah. It, I never it's get awesome. It. Love Nobody it, guys. listens yeah, to keep me in my house. I don't know why anybody listens to me outside of it. <laughs> I'm always amazed. And it, and if you're an East fan, we're we're probably close by. You can any uh, certainly for the two of you, pop on by our facility. We're on Rupert and Grandview. Love to have you anytime. Oh. Rupert and Grandview. Yeah, across from the okay. superstore. Where Dia was. Yeah, oh, we're, we're in the we're in the Dia facility. My shit, I'm I'm, I'm just up the street. I'm on Renfrew. Come on down. Street. We'll 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 have a pie with you. Ooh, I'd be all over that. Be careful. Yeah. I might be there more than you want. <laughs> Great problem. Wow. Awesome. Okay, very cool. Um, yeah. Thanks, Craig. Um, Thank you, guys. So yeah. if everybody's next week, it, you know, I don't know how fast Phil's is getting out. And I don't know if we're sold out food, food pro or not. If we're not, get a great chance out. to meet Craig. I get a pie it's out of it. You never know. Yeah. Pop on by. Love to see everybody. Yeah. Looking forward to it. Amazing. Sounds good. Thanks, Craig. Great. Thank you guys. Have a great afternoon, and okay. we'll yeah, talk we'll to you next week. week, and we'll get you on the podcast. Take care, guys. Thanks. Okay, Bye. 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 Ciao.